build a functional site for a fire station, situate it on the property, and then draw the line as to what we need. And then we only remove that amount. So right now we're showing an approximately 3.8 acre parcel. It's not going to be a square like that at the end of the day. The line will be drawn after the building is fit on the site and situated in a way so it's oriented that we're not taking any more space than we need. So we have to do some design development and we have to do some survey work before we can draw that boundary. We have to provide equal or better mitigation land that will be put under Article 97 protection for what we take out. So, and when we say equal or better, we mean equal or better in size, so square footage, equal and better in habitat or other ecological services. We will need to commission scientific surveys of habitat and ecological resources for both parcels. The parcel that we would be removing from Article 97 and the parcel that we would be proposing to put under Article 97. So we can compare the habitat and the ecological services don't necessarily need to be exactly the same, but there needs to be a comparable value. We need to file an environmental notification form, an ENF, with the Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act Office, MEPA. So we'll have a MEPA review. The land to be put under Article 97 has to have it has to be equal or has to have an equal or higher appraised value. So there's the habitat and, uh, and ecological services component, there's the acreage component, and there's the money, the value component. So we will commission an appraisal, a property appraisal as part of this process. EOEEA requires that the reason for the disposition serves another public purpose. In this case, the, uh, the other public purpose is fire protection. And in, in some cases, not for this particular parcel, we have done the research, but EOEEA does require that if this property had been gifted to the town or sold to the town with restrictions, that the disposition cannot be contrary to the express wishes of the person or person who donated or sold the property to the town. That, that does not apply here. So this, this property was acquired by the town, I believe in 1988. We have done the research and it did not come with conditions from the granting agents, um, the granting party. I'm going to ask Chief Cody to talk about the unique challenges of operating a fire department in a town that is bisected by a canal, the conditions of the existing stations on the south side, the acute need for a new station, and the response time study that the department commissioned to identify a suitable location for the new station based on the call volume they receive and to explain why this particular location on Shore Road is a highly valuable site for a fire station. Good evening, uh, I get a chance to work with you. My name is Dave Cody, I'm fire chief, I'm also a resident of the castle. Long time. Let me tell you a couple different things tonight. Uh, first, I want to tell you about why we need the new station on the south side. I want to tell you how we got here because, as Marlene said, this is our last resort. This was can't be adverse choice. And then I want to talk about the response times. Those of you that aren't aware, uh, there were two stations on the south side of the canal. The Gasset Station was built in 1946. It was closed due to a lot of structural instability of the floor back in October 2021. We had to move out of here at that point. We could no longer hold our apparatus. At that point, our crews moved to Montague Station. That station was built originally in the 1800s, rebuilt in 1920. So it's not habitable. We had to bring in temporary housing. So right now our crews are living in a temporary housing unit outside the station. We have been since October of 2021. So that's all we got for fire stations on the south side right now. How we got here was uh, first building committee was established uh, six years ago. 
So there's been two committees working for almost six years trying to find uh, land. We've looked at no less than 19 sites, uh, just so you understand the area we we're looking at when we first put out the RFP and when the building committee set up the response area. We were looking for something centrally located on the south side. It was going to be north of Barlow's Landing Road, east of Shore Road, west of MacArthur Boulevard, and south of Waterhouse Road. The reason we chose that land, that area, was because um, Castle and Morning Beach make up 33% of all emergency calls in town of Warren. So effectively, 50% um, of all our emergency calls are on the south side of the canal. So effectively, that makes 70% of the calls on the south side occurring in the Morning Beach and Castle area. That's how we determined that's what we wanted the single station. So again, we committee looked at or discussed 19 different sites, put out three RFPs, uh, one in August of 21, we've October of 22, and just a recent one in February of 24. Uh, each time we had one, we had one respondent. First two respondents uh, was Motorway, uh, which is where they're not on MacArthur Boulevard, where they're clearing the land. Second time they answered the RFP as well. They withdrew from consideration. This last RFP we put out in October, uh, February of 24th. We had one respondent. Um, it was too far south for our needs. So that is how we ended up here. We have exhausted every option we have. It's been six years, 19 locations. We also hired a consultant in May of 2022 who did a station study location for us. And we've the area that we'd chosen, where I told you, between MacArthur and Shore Road, uh, was the best area for response. So, uh, so um, um, again, if we're talking about uh, response times, again, it doesn't work. We need to look at this as a whole town of one. In the three station model that we have now, this is our Buzzard Face Station. Sagamore Station, this is be the proposed station for the baseball field. Anything you see in yellow shows that we would be able to provide an under four minute response time, which makes NFPA standards for response. That's both for ambulance and fire response. Anything in green would be under eight minutes. The one thing we just have to reiterate about the eight minutes is it doesn't mean everything in green is eight minutes. If you write on the board here, it could be four and a half minutes. This could be five minutes. But it's just showing that anything that is white is over eight minutes. Based on our studies, I gave this criterion associates in May of 22. It's, these are really good times. This location yeah. provide adequate coverage for the entire town. Again, you need to remember that it's the Catholic station that's out. We'll wait for Buzzards Bay to come over to cover the south side. If Sagamore goes out, Buzzards Bay is going to Sagamore. So we know we're effectively building a station for the south side. We have to think of the town and the whole as well. So that, I know you have a full agenda, but I just want, wanted to open up if there's any questions you have. I just wanted to really kind of tell you the need of the stations, why we're there. Um, obviously, we don't have any on the side right now that are functional. How we ended up here with questions, sort of land for 90% protection. Sarah, question? Rob? I don't know. No? Uh, I've got a curiosity question for the existing sites. Um, is there any reason why we can't just demo what's there go to the next fire station? Yeah, that's so I really, for a while, I was thinking we were going to be back at the Castle Station. That was where we were working the last several months until we found out in the flood zone. Even if we move it back, out of the flood zone itself, um, we're going to be driving right in the path of all of into the flood zone. Can't have a that's, fire station. That's why it got ruled out. Yeah, if you had visions about the hurricane in Naples a couple of years ago, it was fighting trucks in the water. Um, we were working on that right up to this final point. We really thought once we realized we weren't going to have to move the baseball fields, the architects were working to save the baseball fields. And then they take the gas with the uh, flood zone. Yeah, yeah, we really did want to rebuild up the gas at. Because of the ASO. And the cover morning station is too small. It, it couldn't serve a fight. That's, that station was built for the end, like I said, in the 1800s, until like 1920. Mm -hmm. uh, we just put it in the 
a lot of money into the field to get our ambulance to fit into that station on a temporary basis just to raise the header. Thank you. Paul? Was that diagram the part of the result of the response time study, or is that still ongoing? No, the response uh, study is done. Okay. Uh, and that was, again, that was Criterion Associates. We can get you copies of that. I think you have a new package. Uh, but that was part of the initial study that was conducted in May of 22. Okay. And I think the other thing is, sounds like a pretty high hurdle here. Um, and would like to see the full uh, site comparisons mm -hmm. um, matrix at some point, just to kind of see what reasoning went in there. You know, obviously there's a lots of constraints that narrows it down to probably only a select few, mm -hmm. um, but to satisfy that hurdle, you know, we need to look at it pretty comprehensively, I think. I will say one of the largest constraints when we started looking at sites is um, the, the wellhead protection areas and the water resource protection zones for the public water supply. So fire stations, especially because of the foam and PFAS contamination are, are not allowed and not recommended to be anywhere near public drinking water supply. So because of how the well fields lay out, we, we certainly don't want to cause any PFAS contamination. So once we remove that kind of from play, our areas are significantly reduced. The other problem is no one answered the RFP. No one wants to sell us land. Right? So we're really limited to what town owns or what people are willing to sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, we have, and I did confirm with town council, it doesn't matter how many times we issue the RFP. We can issue the RFP 100 times. And if nobody responds, we still cannot go out and open negotiations. As a, as a municipality, we have to use a, a public procurement bidding process. We have no other option. Peter. The, the, the bar that they want us to, uh, to lease uh, is quite high. Uh, it's almost impossible to do. That's why they made it that way. Uh, the other thing is that I think we forget that uh, April 25th is the uh, Cape Cod Bridge uh, Program's uh, big meeting on the replacement of the of the two bridges, uh, and it's it's highly probable, if not likely, that we're going to lose a lot of conservation land when they build the bridges. So uh, I think we're in a really difficult position here. To give up uh, this conservation land, and we're going to lose more. So uh, I'm. I think it's a very difficult decision we have to make. That's about all I have to say now. Until we discuss it some more. Elise, thanks, Bob. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, I do have a, a few questions actually, so I hope you all bear with me. Um, one of my biggest questions is: there's a lot of talk about the whole list of conditions that is required to be met before you can pull land out of Article 97. And one of, I think, the hardest ones is going to be to find a suitable replacement site, to find that mitigation land that is of equal or greater size, equal or greater ecological value. And I did a quick and dirty look around town for a town-owned open space that isn't currently protected and don't see anything that jumps up as being possible. Um, so my question to you, I guess, is twofold is, have you done a quick search? To, is there something that could potentially serve your purposes for this? And if not, based on what the fire chief just said, no one wants to sell you land. How on earth are we going to f buy this from somebody else if you can only do it through an RFP? So um, I'm happy to answer that to the extent that I can. Part of the part of the challenge with the RFP for the fire station use is that we have to look within a specific area for response time purposes and we have to look at areas not within water resource protection districts so the fire department use has a lot um it's more specialized it needs a very particular we have to be in a very particular location the mitigation land for open space, we can look townwide. We don't have to constrain ourselves to, you know, 
the area that the chief described between Shore Road and Bar and um, MacArthur and Barlow is in was it Trooper Waterhouse. So we're looking at that little square for fire department land. We can look everywhere in the town of Bourne for the mitigation piece. So we are looking to acquire property outside of our outside of our fire station area for the mitigation piece. So um, the select board is currently working on a couple of different fronts. Those are um, in those are in negotiation right now, so I can't discuss them publicly. But because we because the mitigation land can be within the water resource protection district and can be we can look far and wide for it, we have a larger pool to pull from in order to find that replacement piece. The shore road piece that we would propose to come out of 97 and protection, we're proposing it because it is within our area for response time and it's not within a water protection district. Thank you for that. I guess so what, what you are telling me is you have started looking, or at least the select board has started looking at potential mitigation sites, but you can't share those with us? Not yet. Okay. I, for me, and I, unfortunately, I'm, a, I'm an associate member, so I have no longer have my voting powers, but I would um, urge the rest of the commission to consider that that's the biggest piece of information we're going to want to see from um, this study. I think in order to be comfortable with unanimously approving that this piece of land gets taken out of 97. Um, and so that's going to be something that it may be worth bringing the Conservation Commission along in those discussions to the extent that you can, even in some kind of a private, um, non-public setting. I don't know how we do that. You know, there's open meeting laws. Um, but that, I know you were talking about potentially moving certain things forward at different, uh, maybe not one after the other after the other. And it would be a shame to do some of these studies, have the appraisal, get all these environmental assessments, have the select board pick their favorite piece of mitigation land and then drop it on the conservation commission um, thinking that they're gonna like it and then we don't. Um, I think it would make more sense to work together through the whole process. And that's very much what we would like to do. We don't wanna drop anything on you kind of fully formed. We, we would prefer if it's okay with you to come back at regular intervals and provide you with updates. Um, I, have, I, have, I have to leave. I have, I'm sorry. That's okay. Did you have something related to this, Peter? Otherwise, I have a couple other questions. Yeah, go with your questions. Um, in terms of the coming back to the commission, I'll leave that to Bob and Stevie. But um, while I have you for questions right now, um, I would also just note that everything you mentioned in terms of the due diligence that would need to be performed to satisfy that this new piece of hypothetical land is equal or greater than the one that we're taking out. Um, that appraisal, the various ecological surveys, um, that's a lot of time and that's a lot of money. And it doesn't seem like the most time efficient or cost efficient way to get what we need. Um, but I, I guess if you truly are out of other options, then then maybe this is it. But like Paul said, I would really like to see that other siting assessment for the, the fire station to let us sort of understand why you truly are out of options. Um, I think would be really helpful. So I guess that was more of a comment than a question. Um, and then my final question is something you said at the end is that if the fire station is a site of potential contamination with PFOS and foam and everything else, is that really something that we want immediately up against our conservation land? Right. So is that how, how can we mitigate impacts to, to the conservation land that's left? if that does get cited there. So the PFAS, um, the PFAS is ubiquitous. The problem with it is that it travels quickly through water and we and there are drinking water standards set by DEP. So it is an, it is an issue for public water supply. It does not travel through soil. It, it's attenuated in the soil. Okay, well, thank you. Um, those are all my questions. Thank you very much. I have a question. Um, so, from what you said in terms of 
looking at parcels and putting out the RFPs, it sounds like the town doesn't have an option of eminent domain to pursue a parcel if you have a piece that would work and the owner is reluctant to sell. So the town always has the option of a hostile taking. There's no question about it. Um, that is, that is sometimes um, extremely risky mm -hmm. as far as exposure for litigation and damages and can tie us up in court for yep. decades. Um, the, the 19 parcels, the 19 parcels that we've looked at have included private property, and included property that have come up on the market for sale. Um, some of them probably would have been, had to have been hostile takings as single family homes. Um, we, I think as a public policy statement, we don't want to take people's private homes. I'm just like the other one for the 19 properties. A lot of those 19 properties were just discussed preliminarily mm -hmm. in, in uh, meetings. They never made it to the uh, final location study because, you know, we want one another like that probably has a great location, but it's, it's an acre and a half. It's not going to build the station the last 100 years. Well, this is great, but it's going to take up three people's houses. Well, it's only three uh, residential yards. So some of them didn't even make it. The final the study that we've uh, referenced for by Criterion focused on the six, what was deemed to be six best properties. Okay. Um, do you have anything else? So we'll see if there's people here or all. We're happy to answer any more questions. Yep. Yes. And if you have them, um, and really, we <clears throat> would like to know if, if there is an interest to work together on this. Without <laughs> polling the members, um, I don't know, but... <laughs> Speaking for myself, I think uh, the more communication we have with uh, your group and our group, the better things will go. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that we all have to look at this as what is in the best interest of the town of Bourne. And um, we, I, I think everyone realizes that we need a fire station location. I'm happy that Monument Beach location is not being considered, and I'm happy that Bacassett's not being considered <laughs> for the simple reason that both of those are in the floodplain. Monument Beach actually isn't. Okay. But I thought it was, but it's close. it might be in the, in the future. In the next round of firms, it could be. Um, but I think that as a municipality, we should be looking at getting as much of our existing infrastructure out of the flood zone. Um, you know, the police station is now in a safe location. We still have the uh, Buzzers Bay Fire Station, which we already know that that's a major flood zone. So we know where the level was in the 38 hurricane there. Um, but I think, I think the commission would, would be willing to work with you. Um, I'll, I'll go on the limb and speak for everyone on that. Uh, so the more communication we have, the better. Um, and I think at this point, let's see if there are some questions. Um, I'll start with the people that are in the room here and then we'll go to the, uh, Zoom so, is there anyone with a question, Dave? Yeah, yep, you, you, either whatever is com whatever makes you comfortable. Just state your name for the record. Uh, Dave DeConto, sixteen Harwood Drive. I just have a uh, question for the commission. Does the commission have any policy or regulations um, 
above and beyond what uh, 97 requires. For example, two to one match for land swaps or something like that. I would say no. Would it be under our bylaw? Uh, whether it's under the bylaw, whether it's a, a working policy or, or anything like that. Not that I'm familiar with. Okay. So, thanks. Thank you. Anyone else with interests, questions, comments? Um, is there someone on the Zoom platform that has a question, comment? You can go ahead and unmute yourself if you want to speak or raise your hand, whichever. I see names, but I don't see anyone waving at us. I don't see anyone. The chat was the that was Born Enterprise recording, Kelly Remillard. Okay. Oh, oh. Kate, Hi. if you'd like to speak, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, my name is Kate McKinnon Daniels, um, 7 Gaffield Avenue in Monument Beach. I guess my question is um, when uh, when uh, seeking these RFPs, I, I'm just wondering if the property owners understood that the conservation land was, um, if the, if the RFPs weren't uh, accepted, the, uh, that the conservation land was going to be the the solution. And I just wonder if that would have impacted uh, those decisions. Does that make any sense? Conservation land was not mentioned in the RFPs. Yeah. And I guess my other question is, um, uh, Bob commented on the fact that uh, he was concerned about the Monument Beach station being in a flood zone. And, and I and I appreciate that um, living in Monument Beach. Uh, but I, I guess I don't really understand why that station can't be made habitable. I know it's small, but um, I just don't I don't I just don't really understand why why that's not an option. Right now, that was, again, that was built in 1920s. So to fit modern apparatus would require building a whole new station, which would require meeting certain, certain standards, which cannot be met in that footprint. Right now, we just, we had to, again, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars just putting a header in that building so we could have ambulance coverage on the south side because they, we couldn't fit modern ambulances into that station. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you, we will eventually have an open house there for people that want to come by and see it. There is maybe six to eight inches behind the back bumper before it meets the rear wall of the station. Bruce can't even walk around it. In that station, we don't have the hazmat facilities, the cleaning facilities. We don't have people cannot open a garage, a fire engine door without hitting a wall or a ladder column. We have talked to the architects. Um, there's, there's, there's no way to be able to build a suitable station that would fit the you know, character of the neighborhood. In the okay, thank you. I, I, I'm I'm very concerned about the um, land being taken out of conservation, and I just wanted to make sure that I was here to articulate that concern. Thank you for your comments, Kate. Uh, is there anyone else on the Zoom that wants to ask questions? I do not see anybody. Um, if not, do you have any parting words of wisdom? We're looking forward to working with you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for uh, the time and resources to explain how we ended up here. Okay, I'm a resident of Dowsett. I value the natural resource found it's not our first choice. Not your residents, but we're rival options. Well, thank you, thank you for coming um, in and making the presentation. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, could I? Else? Could we ask them one more question before they leave? What is sure. the time yeah. frame for the next step, or what should the commission expect in terms of communications or, um, you know, additional information? So the next step is uh, the select board next week has to execute the town meeting warrant for May. And when they execute the town meeting warrant next week, they have to decide whether or not they're going to move forward with an article. 
um, asking to for authorization to file special legislation, which is one of the steps on the list. Um, so that's that's next week. Whether that article moves forward to the main town meeting or not, the fire station building committee will need to um, move forward with starting to gather the information that we're going to need to satisfy the commission and to satisfy EOEEA. So the, the surveys, the um, appraisals, the ecological surveys, we're going to have to find the mitigation parcel and then, but we'll keep you, we can keep you through CV informed all along the way. And we're happy to come back whenever the commission is ready for a, a verbal update. Looks like MJ has her hand up. Who does? MJ. MJ, did you wish to speak? Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Elise, for that question. Um, so one of the things I would like to hear from the commission has to do with whether or not we should be bringing the authorization for the special legislation to the special town meeting, or if we should wait until the commission has had the opportunity to review the proposal to know what it is to know what the mitigation is and to know what the plan is i i'm i'm i i would like some input from the commission about being putting the i'm going to say the cart before the horse by asking for authorization for the 97 land transfer special legislation at town meeting without having all the details. And I'm I, that's one of the things I was interested in hearing about tonight. So I'm interested in that input. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak to that? Go ahead. That is a great question. Yeah, this is Pete Holmes. Oh, uh, I think uh, MJ's. Hold uh, on. Wait a minute. Yep. You get two speaking. Go ahead. Sorry, hold on one minute. So if the town has to vote on this, somewhat like, you know, if you already have our blessing, it might go. But if the town votes it down and it goes first, can you bring it back up later or is it dead? If it could come back to another time. We're not prevented from trying again in the fall, but obviously, strategically, if it fails, then then we have to overcome a, a failure. <laughs> so I guess it is something to consider. Mm -hmm. If you had our blessing already, or whoever votes, if they know, hey, everybody behind it, I go a little better. What, what is the date of the May town meeting? May 6th. Let's see, I'm just wondering strategically, time-wise, mm -hmm. whether we have enough time to get the information in place. If you don't. Yeah. We're going to need to do, to bring you, to bring you the data that you need to make right. inform, to make an informed decision, we're going to need months. Of, of work ahead of us to come back to you with enough information to make a fully informed decision. So hearing that, <laughs> two points. It, it sounds that if that's the case, the commission would not be in a position to take a formal position on this before the May sixth town meeting and therefore if we have the town meeting i can see or anticipate residents asking <laughs> what is the position of the conservation commission on this matter <laughs> so how does the town plan to answer that 
Right. So if we go, if this article goes to the town meeting on May 6th, essentially the Conservation Commission has not taken a position. That's the answer. The Conservation okay. Commission has not had the opportunity yet to receive all the information they need. They have made no decision. By putting it on the 6th, are you getting it? Are you, are you able to move things along quicker for yourselves? There's, I don't see how we're setting your agenda. Yes. That's my thing. You know what I mean? You guys, you're going to work at whatever, whatever pace you feel is appropriate and to do it. I don't think we, I mean, people might ask, you know, what, how do we feel about it? But I don't see how we dictate to your committee how you do things, how, how you want to proceed through this. So the, there is a slight, if it were to pass, if the special legislation were to pass on May 6th, there would be a slight schedule advantage that we could file the special legislation through our state delegation earlier in, earlier in the fall or, or in the summer term. That doesn't mean it's going to move at all until we have done all of this work. So there's, there's no overwhelming advantage of going to May. The, the work has to get done before anything, the, the studies, the data, all of that work has to get done before it can, anybody can make a decision. So what would be the disadvantage mm -hmm. of not putting this on the May 6th annual town meeting and to move the question to the fall special town meeting where some of these elements that are in motion right now that we don't have answers on, we might have answers by the fall. So what I'm going to say is that Chief Cody is a member of the building committee. I'm, I'm not. So um, the building committee has taken a vote, the building committee has taken a vote to put the article on the warrant. So the fire station building committee has taken that vote. Um, so I held the article on the warrant for them pending the select board's execution of the warrant. So the building committee, which I can't speak for, I'm not on it, but the committee's vote was based on the fact that they feel that the, the slight schedule advantage of filing the special legislation as soon as possible gives them an advantage. Is that accurate? That was the impression I was getting, but again, it's a very slight, slight, slight advantage. Because again, I mean, we still held out until we get the research. But that's the vote of the building committee. That's why it's on the warrant. Yeah, I think it's I, I think it's going to be very difficult for the commission to reach a point where we feel we have enough information to take a formal vote if we don't have what I see as a key here, and that is what is the mitigation that is going to be offered. Absolutely. Um, and we know that EOEA is not going to move on any of this until they see that same information. So I guess the sooner some of these areas that you might have under consideration are put into play so that they can be made public so that we can evaluate those ourselves, um, the better off we're going to be. Um, I'll leave it at that for, for right now. Do we want to check in with Peter? Did he have anything yeah. else? Peter, did you have another comment? No, I, I can live with where we are right now. I, although, although I think we're going to leave the general public uh, at the public meeting uh, in the in the next month or two, 
uh, going to be kind of like uh, asking them to make a decision when we don't even we're not even going to make a decision. I, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> but anyways, well, we'll work with it. Okay, anyone else on the Zoom platform with a question or concern? Uh, just, a, just, just, a, yeah, just a follow up concern. If the town, if if it's left to the town to make a decision on this without the commission providing any information, it's not, it's not a very well informed decision, and it, right? Right. So right. they 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 could be making a decision in ignorance, and that makes me very concerned. Could you make it clear to everyone what this? This vote at town meeting means. I think that would help understand. So the vote at town meeting is is to authorize the town, the select board, to file special legislation in, at the state house to essentially start the pro to to get in line, and then over the course of the legislative session. EOEEA follows the special legislation and as we as we satisfy the requirements you know if as we satisfy the requirements then they allow the legislation to move forward but we the town cannot file the legislation at all without the authority of town meeting that's what the town meeting question is <laughs> Because I don't want people to think they're approving the project by at town meeting if they're voting on it. Because they're not voting on the fact that a finished project, this is done, and that's the way it is. No, town, right. me, we ha town meeting has to give us the uh, the authority. Town meeting has to give us the ability to even start the ask. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I have a quick question. Um, how many comparable valued properties or parcels of land do you have in mind? I know you can't discuss what they are. Are we looking at one, a couple, a few? I can't answer that because I, I can't answer that because I don't know. We haven't done the survey yet on how much land we have to take. Okay. I can tell you. <laughs> I can tell you that. Our goal is that let's say we take three contiguous acres out. We want to put three contiguous acres in. We don't want to put one acre here, one acre here, and one acre here. So part of, I think, what we would consider to be equal or better value is that um, we don't take a chunk, a contiguous chunk, and then we carve it all off with the mitigation that gets put back under Article 97. So depending on depending on how much we need to take out, once we have the site fit, mm -hmm. then we can write, then we can start right-sizing our look. Because honestly, it makes a difference if we need to if we need to provide okay. mitigation is a difference of if we need to provide four and a half acres of mitigation. It 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 comes there's a difference there. It comes down to that. Some of the things that we are looking at for mitigation is, you know, obviously the type of habitat or the type of value of the property, but as far as forested or wetlands or but there's also the fact that this is a piece of a larger corridor. So if we can find mitigation that is contiguous to another larger corridor, in my opinion, I think that would be more valuable because we're increasing the, we're not fragmenting it. We're, we're building, we're building the contiguous nature of the, the, the habitat. Okay, that leads me into my next question. It's pretty ambiguous, the amount of acreage you guys want to do. And you said about 3.8 acres. That's where are you thinking for. Okay, are you thinking larger? Is that the lesser end? We think that's, we think it'll be less than that. Okay. Okay. I can't. Yeah. He might have a different opinion. No, no we, even in the RFP, because we were looking... We took out originally the first RFP that went out was looking for four to seven acres. 
we have a hard time with that. So then we're done. that was one on a once floor model, a one story model. Uh, we took out the size requirements on the last RFP, and we then looked into building a two station, a two floor station, just to keep the footprint smaller. Okay. So that's it's been working to go on the smallest footprint we can get right now. Okay. We are pushing our we are pushing our architect and our design team to be very creative, and you know they of course would love to have as much land as possible and make it very easy to design. But that is not going to be an option, and we have told them on very, uh, on you know, very certain terms, we have to be efficient with the land. You can't. I don't care if it keeps for design work. You have to limit your footprint. So, I think we're gonna. My guess is we're gonna come in around two acres. Okay. Is my guess, but that that is not set yeah. in any way yet. Okay. Thank you. Following up on, on this size issue, and you sort of touched on it, um, mitigation piece, and let's use just the three, call it three and a half acres. Mm -hmm. um, if that mitigation parcel that you're looking at butts another piece, that's a plus. Mm -hmm. I think. But yes, it would be. But if you're looking at three and a half acres that we're losing and then just finding a three and a half acre parcel that sits by itself, there's not a lot of redeeming value to that three and a half acres if it's sitting by itself. And I, I think, again, that EOEA is going to be looking for um, something that's really valuable that have, has an overriding ecological, environmental reason that we should put that into play as Chapter 97 land, but the land we're losing. Mm -hmm. And um, See, we're, we're looking at a, a large parcel, and by cutting off <clears throat> the northern piece for the fire station, we're segmenting that, reducing its overall value. So the piece that we're looking for for mitigation, we've got to be sure that it's get higher value than the forested land that we're giving up and that it's contiguous to other uh, open space uh, property to, to make it really worthwhile. And that is what, that is our, what we're looking for. In an ideal world, that's what we'll be coming back to you with. Okay. Anyone else with questions, comments, either on Zoom or in the audience? I got a question. Go ahead. If this does go to the town meeting, yeah. when you have a question, just say it's question one. If you, it says, if you vote yes, it gives us explanation of what's going on. If you vote no, there's an explanation going on. So, like in the yes section, could something be in that if it does go in May, that we did not vote on it yet. So it doesn't mean it's necessarily done deal. So they know we're aware of it? Well, yeah, it would, I, I would assume that that's going to be part of a well, presentation. Because so, someone's going to ask what's the position okay, of the commission. So just so the people are aware of it, so, they, so there's no confusion. The, now, the cannabis stuff was going down. There was a lot of confusion in that town hall because things weren't explained. But it's the same problem I got with this. It's, but the people know, so it's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I only have one question. What's the fallback if the town uh, meeting guys vote uh, don't vote for you? What's the what, what do you got for a fallback? We would continue to work, and we would come back in October. Is it an advantage then? Is it truly an advantage to urgently put it in front of town meeting? And that would I be my that question. Was just of MJ's question. Yeah. Good. 
Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. I take a couple minutes break here or not? Power through, man. Huh? <laughs> I can get you. Um,